please write this topic down. Discovering and releasing your gift to impact the world. Our focus today is going to be on understanding the principle of self-manifestation. Write that down. Self-manifestation. People are not looking for you. They are looking for what you are carrying. And if you don't manifest what you are carrying, the world will ignore you. Because you exist doesn't mean you're going to be successful. Because you are on the planet doesn't mean that people are going to notice you. You can live an entire life and not be noticed by humanity. We can bury you in a cemetery and we would never know you were here except for that tombstone. And the reason is because most of the humans on earth live on earth but never manifest themselves. And so the most important goal in your life should be self-manifestation. I want to explain what I mean by that. A couple of principles to write down. What is the greatest human need. I'm going to give you eight of them. And these needs motivate every human. The greatest human needs, eight of them I will give you. One, the sense of purpose. Every human need to feel that they were born for a reason. Second human need that exists. Every human needs a sense of value. We all want to feel valuable. And we would do anything to achieve that. Sometimes stupid things. But we want to feel important. And that leads to num- number three. Every human wants to feel the sense of significance. No one in this auditorium or the millions watching this program airing all over the world would deny that they want to feel significant. That's why people dress strange. Sometimes people cut their hair in weird ways. You wonder why. Some people dye their hair strange colors. And you wonder why would a person do that? The motivation is so deep. And it has to do with these needs. And these are not wants. These are needs. The fourth need of a human is the need to feel important. If you ignore a person, it's a deep hurt. I think all of you in this room have felt the power of being ignored. You are in a room, people walk past you. How do you feel? Someone who you know meet you, but don't speak to you. How do you feel? That that feeling is a human feeling. For everyone to be chosen except you for an assignment gives you a deep depression because you want to feel what? Important. The sixth human need is the need for a sense of meaning. We want to believe that there's meaning for our life, that we are not just here on this planet to eat and breathe oxygen and then evaporate into nothing. We want to believe that there's a a, a context, a context for our lives, that that we were born and sent to the planet to do something and then there's life afterwards. There's got to be meaning to all of this. And every human is looking for that sense of meaning. We try to find it in religion. We try to find it in yoga. We try to find it in meditation. We try to find it in all kinds of scientific exploration. That's why we go to to the planets. We're trying to find out if if we're the only one here. Uh, Is there a, a, a sense to all of this madness called the universe? 
the need to feel that there's meaning to your life. And the sixth need of a human, write this down because these are how you deal with people. All human wants to feel a sense of fulfillment. That's why you want to pay your bills off. That's why you want to own a car. That's why you want to finish an assignment. There's this desire to feel I have fulfilled something. We want to finish things. We want to be proud of ourselves. This is a human need. And the last one, the last two I should say, is we are desiring a sense of personal power. Everybody say power. I have not yet gotten over the fact when I discovered that all humans are pursuing power. That shocked me. I myself included. We need to feel powerful. Let me define power for you. Write it down. Power means the ability to control your circumstances. Every human wants to feel they can control their circumstances. That's why we feel depressed when we are overtaken by circumstances. We feel powerless. When the doctor tells you that they discover something in your body that's terminal, how do you feel? You just lost power over your body. When they say that your child is abnormal, how do you feel? Powerless. When they say to you that the company is closing down and you have to be terminated, how do you feel? You just lost power. How do you feel when someone breaks into your home and you go home and everything is upset and broken up? You feel raped because you had no control over what happened. This desire for power is very human and it's a need. And the last one, we have a sense the need for success. Now, whatever your definition of success is, it's up to you, but all of us want to feel, I was successful. We hate to fail. We hate to feel that we did not accomplish something. I was speaking to a young lady recently, and uh, matter of fact, I was in South Africa, and uh, she told me that her boss was having problems. And the boss was the, 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 the general manager of this hotel, massive hotel. And he and I became friends. And I've been going to South Africa, as you know, for many years. And this guy's become like, almost like a disciple. He read my books, got saved, and he's a very wealthy, powerful guy who runs this whole hotel for years. And he came to me, and I, I said, I want to see you. I heard you have a problem. And he said, my marriage is falling apart. And we talked for about two hours. And then he walked me up to my room, followed me all the way to my room, you know, because he's the manager, and uh, he just wanted to be around me. And we went into the room, we sat down, and we talked for another hour. I prayed with him, gave him some counsel. And then on the way out of the room, this man, nice suit, beautiful tie, powerful man, just turned around and grabbed me and wept like a child. And I just held him. And he said, you are like my father. I have no father to talk to about this pain. And I said, then you are my son. Go ahead and cry. And he wept like a child. And you know what he was saying while he was weeping? I failed. You know, when your marriage falls apart, that's how you feel. No one wants to fail. No success can break a man down. The need to feel that you achieved what you set out to do is a human need. Not completing your goal gives you a sense of failure. So these needs are very important. And I want to ask you what I call the human questions. Because they are related to these questions I've been teaching for years. 
These needs are related to these questions. The first question is, who am I? The second question is, where did I come from? The third question is, why am I here? The fourth question, what can I do? And the fifth question that we have to ask ourselves constantly is, where am I going? And all these questions haunt every human. You yourself, sitting here today and watching this program, I know deep in your heart, you're grappling with these questions. Every human, seven billion of us, whether we live in a 10-story building or sleeping under a bridge on a cardboard box, these questions are in your mind. Who am I? And most of us find difficulty answering these questions because these questions are very frightening. Ask yourself the first question for a moment. That's silence, huh? Who am I? I didn't ask you what you did. I asked people this question, who are you? I'm a doctor. No, that, no that, that, that's, that's what you do. Who are you? I'm a nurse. No, that's your profession. Who are you? I asked. Not what do you do? Tough question. To answer the question, you must answer it with two words, right? Who are you? What do you have to answer? I am. And then you got to fill the blank in. I don't think anyone on earth used the two words I am more than Jesus Christ. And that's a good sign because that means he knew who he was. I am the way. I am the bread of life. I am the water. I am the door. I am the resurrection. I am the good shepherd. He knew who he was. He didn't do shepherd. He says, I am shepherd. He didn't do door. I am. See, it's a different question. Not a profession. I don't want to deal with these questions right now because I want to talk to you really about how these questions are manifested. Uh, first of all, write this quote down. You can tweet it right now to someone. Men do not decide their future. And when I say men, I'm talking about all mankind, the male and female. We don't decide our future, we decide our habits. And our habits decide our future. What kind of habits do you have? What is your secret habit? What is your public habit? You designing your future with that habit. If you don't exercise, for example, habitually don't exercise, you're designing your future. If you have a smoking habit, you can predict your future. If you have a habit of watching television, your future is designed in that habit. So the power of a habit can control your destiny. Everything in life is a habit. So you got to decide your habits. I have a habit, for example, of reading the Bible every day. That's what I do. It's a habit. That is not a, some spiritual giant. I made it a habit. So if I don't read the Bible, I feel like I'm Jonesing. You know, I'm going through withdrawals. What a good habit to have. Prayer should be a habit. For most people, prayer is an occasional surprise. Or when things are falling apart only. Your habit decides your future. Write this down, please. Discontent is the seed of change. The only way to break a habit is to become discontented with it. In other words, you will never change what you tolerate. How many times have you said, I need to change this, you know? But you keep doing it. It's because you tolerate it. Whatever you tolerate will never change. So how do you break a toleration? Here's my advice. Write this down. You will never become what you could be 
until you become angry with what you are. Anger brings change. People say that God is love. And sometimes we use that to accommodate evil. But the Bible says God also hates things. <laughs> the, the great King David wrote seven things God hates. Solomon wrote 14 of them. What do you hate? You can't love everything. Everything can be right. Every can, everything can be okay. Your life is defined by what you hate. Can you write that down right now? Your hatred decides your future. Do you hate lying? Or do you tolerate it? Do you hate corruption? Or do you permit it as long as you don't claim to be involved in it? Do you hate it? Whatever you don't hate, you allow. And whatever you allow, you will never change. So how does this relate to your gift? I want to give you an answer. Make a note of this. Whatever you were created to become, you possess now. This is a divine principle. What did I say? Whatever you were created to become, you possess it now. In other words, whatever you were born to do is not ahead of you. It's within you. Because whatever you were destined to become, God has prepared you with it. The creator never places the future outside of a thing. It's a very important principle. You are pregnant right now with your destiny. Your future is not ahead of you. It's actually trapped on the inside. I'm going to prove that in a minute before we close. In other words, write this down. You came to planet Earth with your future inside of you. I say it this way. God hid your future in a place where he knew you couldn't miss it. Most of us, based on our culture, have been taught to go and find your future or go to your destiny or go and find God's will for your life. Have you ever heard that? Go and find God's will. I remember when I was growing up in the Bahamas here attending religious churches and they used to always tell us, you know, uh, go and find God's will. So I went looking for it, like most of you have been doing. And I never found it because God's Will is not hiding around the, the wall or hiding around a corner or somewhere in some other country or some other street. God's will was in a place I never expected. They never taught me to look there. Matter of fact, God loves you so much that his will is not a mystery. He hid it right where you know you can't miss it. Let's put it this way. You were sent to earth to release your hidden potential on earth. All of you in this room and the millions watching this program, I have good news for you. You are not a mistake. You are not a biological accident. You are not a cultural nuisance. You came to this earth because there's something the earth needed that God hid inside of you. We have been damaged greatly by our culture. We've been damaged greatly by our society. We've been damaged greatly by our educational systems because they have actually been conditioning us to believe that we are only here to find a job, pay some bills, and die. 
Am I right? Matter of fact, everything your parents tell you has to do with a job. And so we are conditioned just to get an education to get a job and then work in a place we hate for 45 years. And then they give us a clock to go home with to sit in a rocking chair to watch the rest of our time fade away. This is what they call retirement. Retirement. I was thinking the other day about the word retirement. You ever look at that word carefully? It means you're tired. So you are retired. <laughs> Double tiredness. You were brought to this planet, set here by a greater power to deliver something that we need. And so, I have good news for you. And write this down. God created everything with gifts. In other words, you are a package sent to earth to deliver a gift to your generation. You are obligated to us. You owe me what you are carrying. Make a note of this. Everything in creation was created with a gift. Everything. It took me 30 years to make that one statement. Research, experience, my own life, studying creation itself. God created nothing without a gift in it. Secondly, a gift is, I'm going to define it for you, a gift is the inherent capacity to fulfill a function that meets a need in creation. What is a gift? A gift is an inherent capacity. Every word is important here. Inherent means no one can give this to you. You came with this. A gift is an inherent capacity which was put in the thing to fulfill a function. And the gift that you carry to fulfill the function is to meet the needs of something else in creation. This is very important. You didn't come to earth for yourself. And what you are carrying is not for you. Everybody say gift. So make a note of this. A gift can never be learned. It can only be refined. That's why you can go to college and get a PhD and still be broke. Because education is not a gift. You can actually go to school and spend a lot of money going through all kinds of universities and never refine your gift because you took the wrong courses. Most people, God forbid, in this room went to college and studied the wrong thing because your decision to choose a certain area of study was motivated more by economic potential than personal fulfillment and so now you got the money but you are depressed because you are not fulfilling your gift a gift can never be learned do not go to school, young people, to find a gift. Single woman, I promise you, you'll never find your gift in education. 
No one can lay hands on you and give you a gift. They can lay hands on you and stir it up. No prophecy can give you a gift. A prophecy may stir it up. It's inherent. Write this point down, please. This is very simple. The gift is the source of value to the created thing. I'm glad you're here. Because if you understand this, you won't follow the crowd. Let me say it again. Your gift is the source of your value. <laughs> your value comes from your gift. So if you never find your gift, you will never be valuable to us. And your value determines how much you make in life. You get paid for the value you bring to the earth. Don't pursue money. Discover what gives you value. Whatever gives you value is the source of your wealth. Let me ask you a question. What makes a dentist valuable? Can you tell me? Well, when you have a toothache and it's paining you, who do you think of? You don't think of your wife or your husband, boyfriend or girlfriend. You don't think of the dog nor your boss. Who do you think about? The dentist. Now why? Because the dentist has refined a gift that makes him or her valuable. And they are so valuable, you will take your hurting gums in your car, drive all the way to where they are, and take your money out of your pocket and give them the money and you would even lay on your back and open your mouth and just say ah why because the value in that person is so strong they make you surrender not just your money but your body you've not been taught this what i'm teaching you your parents never taught you and that's why you're struggling to pay light bills and water bills and, and trying to get along in life because they actually taught you not to find your value. Your gift is the source of your value. I must confess, when I was a kid growing up, I grew up with Michael Jackson. Some of you more grew up with Michael. You know Michael Jackson? You know Michael? Michael was like three feet high. And we used to watch this little guy on television. Some of you are looking so holy, but you remember, remember this guy? And they used to wear bell-bottom pants, red bell-bottom pants, yellow shirt with a pink hat and an afro with a scarf that hung down to the ground. That little kid would take that microphone and mesmerize millions. He never learned that. One time they asked him, I'll never forget the interview, they said, do you love music? He says, I am music. Notice the two words now, I am. Where did he get his money from all of his life? The gift What do people pay to see? The gift. People flew from the Bahamas to Los Angeles, paid money to see Michael Jackson on a stage. That's a lot of money. But you see, you become so valuable, you draw money. <laughs> it 
if you don't find your gift, I guarantee you're going to die broke and poor. Guaranteed. This session is probably one of the most important sessions in your life because you are still stuck looking for a job. You know what's good about gifts? You don't have to look for them. I believe the greatest curse that, is, that has ever come upon the human race is what they call employment. Forgive me, but that's just what I believe. Because employment destroys your gift. It stops you even from thinking about it. If you study all of our culture, all of our cultures, look at our cultures, they are built on employment. When you go to school and you sit in a classroom in a grade school, the teacher never asks you, what do you think your gift is? They never ask you that. In high school, you went through all of high school, and they, they didn't ask you about your gift. They ask you what career you want to go into. See, your career is not your gift. And you normally go for a career that promises you prosperity. And so here you are, well-educated, trained, and still trying to pay a phone bill. Stressed. Your gift is your source of value. Write this down, please. Purpose determines your gift. This is a very important statement. What did I say? Purpose determines your gift. Now, there's something more important than your gift, and it's your purpose. But your purpose produces the gift. If you can find the purpose of a thing, you'll also discover simultaneously its gift. So if you don't know what your purpose is yet, I guarantee you don't know your gift. Now, I want to give you a little deeper thought here. The power of your gift. Your gift is so powerful that it says this in the Bible. Proverbs 18 verse 19. Can you read it with me out loud? Go. A man's gift makes room for him in the world. And it brings him before great kings. Not him. It brings him. A man's gift is so powerful. It makes room for him. It makes room for him where? In the world. What's the word world? Systems. Listen, the systems want to lock you out. They tell you how far you can go. They stop you from promotion. They hinder you. They even tell you when to retire. They block your advancement. If someone don't like you, you're in trouble. But according to this statement, your gift ignores everybody. It makes room. Even the guy who hates you will come looking for your gift. How many of you are in love with your dentist? You don't like it? Matter of fact, you hate the way he makes your mouth feel. But you're still going back to him all the time. Why? Because it ain't the person. Let me ask you a question. You claim to be a Christian, whatever that means. And you have a medical problem. You have some disease, maybe a growth or something. And the only person in the hospital that can professionally treat you is a Muslim. Now, you're getting ready to die. You got to get this thing cut out of you surgically. You need a professional. You don't need no one speaking in tongues right now. You don't need no scripture. You need a gift. <laughs> so you can decide, I don't want no Muslim touch me. Well, then there'll be a funeral. Here's my point. When it comes to meeting the need... The gift is more important than the person. 
So you take $200,000 to that surgeon in your insurance and give it to him even though he doesn't believe what you believe. Because it's your gift that makes room in the system. Every day now, every day, I, I, there's not been a day that I haven't received an invitation to come speak somewhere on the things I am good at. Every day, including this morning, they come looking for your gift. They pay you to deliver it. They may not like you, but they want what you have. Your gift is so powerful, your enemies come and pay you for it. So let me wrap this up for you. Write this down. The gift of the seed is in the tree. Am I right? Yeah. So write each one of these down, please. The gift of the seed is the tree. Am I right? When you see a seed, it's carrying a gift. So a mango seed is carrying a gift. What is the gift? A tree. Where's the tree? On the inside. See, I tell you, the future's not outside of you. Here's another one. The gift of the tree is what? It's fruit. Trapped in the tree is also a gift. It's the fruit. It might be important to mention here at this point that trees never eat their own fruit. I told you that your gift is never for you. It's for meeting the needs of someone else. The mango is full of nutrition, vitamins, minerals, all kinds of good, mature, beautiful stuff to keep you alive. And yet the tree eats none of it. Your gift is supposed to supply the needs of other people. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Why do you go to a laden down mango tree? I mean, here's this mango tree, the beautiful golden mangoes ready to pick. What makes you jump a fence like I used to do? Don't tell nobody that. And steal a mango. Why would you jump a fence and risk your life with a dog? <laughs> a gift is so powerful, it'll make you violate fences. I'm talking to you now. There are people who call me from Australia and say, look, you got to come on September 19th. And we don't care how much it costs. We're going to send you a plane ticket. For 10,000 US dollars, we're going to pay you 5,000 an hour. Just get here. In other words, we jump fences. Listen, when you go to the mango tree, you never go to the tree for the bark. You don't go to the tree for the leaves. You don't go to the tree for the branches. You don't go to admire the carvings in the tree. What do you go for? One thing. You're going after the fruit. In other words, people are not supposed to be attracted to you. Because they may not even like you. But if you manifest your gift and you refine it and you sharpen it and you ripen it I guarantee you they will walk over their pride see one of my sons back there Elwan, uh, Eduardo Eduardo owns a spa he and his wife and you know my problem is I can't massage my back <laughs> I mean, I know I'm good at a lot of things, but I can't get my hand back there to massage my back. So, you know, when I want a massage, I got to swallow my pride and admit that I can't massage my own back. 
And I go to him and I said, look, I'm going to lay down. Just tell me how to lay. <laughs> Just do what you do. His gift is in his hands. And his gift makes him wealthy. Some of you are working for $17 an hour. Some of you work for five dollars an hour he works for hundred and sixty dollars an hour just with his hands gift <laughs> write this down please the gift of the leaves of the tree is what Oxygen. See, everything has a gift in it. The seed got the tree, the tree got the fruit, and the leaves got oxygen. God created nothing without a gift in it. And if there were no leaves, we would die. We need the leaves of the tree. That's why they tell us don't cut trees down. Don't destroy the Amazon forest. Don't keep building roads and car parks. Because asphalt doesn't give off oxygen. Do you know that's just like you? If you leave us, we just lost a gift. If you die right now, you robbed us. Or if you never find your gift, you are a generational thief. Your gift is your obligation. By the way, when people discover your gift and they enjoy your gift, they will maintain you. Oh Jesus, I just said something deep. Let me say it again. If your gift is supplying someone, they will personally make sure you are maintained. You sound like a tree. If a tree is productive and is giving you fruit, what do you do? You fertilize it, you put water on it, you prune it. Why? Because you want to keep producing. So if you are delivering your gift and you find it and you are effectively delivering that to your, to your generation, they will finance your maintenance. Could you imagine people obligated to keep you alive because you give life? Write this down. Very important. The gift of the bird is flight. Notice that birds don't go to attend flight school. Right? Yeah. Why? Because gift is inherent. The bird is born with flight. The gift of a fish is what? The capacity to swim. Swim. Swimming is inherent in the fish. Fish never attend swimming lessons. Go check the ocean. You, you, not, you, you never see a classroom of fish. They swim in schools, but they don't swim to school. <laughs> Clap. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. So, whatever your gift is, you came with it. Maybe this session, God brought this session in your life just to check you in the middle of the year because maybe you are at the end of your rope but you are frustrated and you feel like you ain't making no headway and maybe you just tired of life and some of you may even be considering a uh, 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 divorce or, or getting rid of life or maybe even even committing suicide and God is saying hold it you are loaded don't rob us of who you are I put it this way, the gift of the sun, the sun has a gift. It gives off violent, ultraviolet rays. If the sun did not exist, we'd all be dead. The sun provides ultraviolet rays for the leaves of the, of the tree. The tree soaks up the, chlorof the ultraviolet rays and, and produces chlorophyll in its leaves. The chlorophyll gives off oxygen which keeps us alive. No sun, no human. 
The sun is a gift. And it has a gift. So, bottom line, let's talk about Jesus. Jesus Christ came to earth with a gift. He said, the Son of Man did not come to be served. This is an important statement. The Son of Man did not come to earth to be served. This is found in Matthew chapter 20. The Son of Man did not come to earth to be what? Served. You didn't come here for us to serve you. He said, I came to serve myself a ransom. Wow. This is enough to shout on for two weeks. Let me quote it for you slowly. He said, I came into the earth to serve myself as a ransom. That means salvation and redemption for mankind. Let me say it again. I came to serve myself. <laughs> you still ain't get it. He said, look, you don't do salvation. You are. Micah says, I don't do music. I am. Tiger Woods don't do golf. Serena Williams, my God have mercy. <laughs> this woman is crazy. They thought she was gone. She came back. Hitting everybody out of the park. Bam, what? She don't do tennis. My question is, who are you? Have you found who you are yet? Your gift is who you are. Jesus Christ came into the world to deliver his gift. That's why it's called the gift of salvation to many who believe. If you walk out of here and don't eat from the tree of Jesus Christ, you will not have the nutrients for eternal life. His fruit is the only fruit that has eternal life nutrients. You may follow Buddha and memorize his statements. You may follow Hare Krishna and chant whatever he chants. You may follow uh, Muhammad and you can memorize all of the rituals of Islam. You can follow uh, 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 Mah Mah Maharaj. These wonderful Maharajis of the of Hindu. Listen, the only one that has the nutrients for eternal life. You should give him a big hand in that. Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me and I will give you eternal life. You could try other trees, he said. You could eat it, any tree, it's fine. But he said, you want the nutrients to live forever. I want to just read a scripture for you. Genesis 1. It says, and God made the earth to bring forth grass and herb and they yielded seed according to their kind and the tree that yields fruit had the seed of itself inside itself very important principle in other words the seed of everything is in itself. So God created everything with the seed of itself in itself. That's why God don't create trees anymore. Because the seed of the self is in itself. The future is inside. When God created you, he packaged you. You came with everything you're supposed to become inside of you. That is your gift. I love this verse. It says in 2 Corinthians 9, Now he who supplies seed, God never gives you trees. He 
He who supplies what? Seed. God always gives you something with something in it. Your child that you gave birth to is really not who you think he or she is. They're carrying something. That's why they call seeds. My father is here. I love my daddy. Hello, dad. My daddy is 90 years old. I'm sure my father used to listen and watch us growing up. 11 of us, you know. And we used to crawl on the floor in Bain Town, you know, the dirty floor. I'm sure he never thought that I was in one of those children. Me, this person you see here. He couldn't have imagined he had a boy with 62 books inside of him. <laughs> he tell you? There's no way he could have dreamt that his boy would be on television over 1.2 billion people viewing him from a wooden house. God supplies seed. He gave my father a seed. In that seed was a gift. My good feeling comes to me every time I meet you. you know, I meet you. Every time I meet someone, I, I, I get happy. I say, I wonder what's inside this one. Tell your neighbor, if you knew what was inside of me, come on, tell him. You would buy me lunch today. I mean, think about it. When my wife married me, I had no money. But my wife somehow had a revelation. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. She called it love. It was revelation. She said, this one looked like he's going to be something. I'm going to hook him up now before someone else get him. <laughs> you don't even know who you're married to. You have no idea who your husband will be. Don't ever judge a person the way they are right now. They are carrying gifts. And listen, when the gift manifests, you won't be the spouse. You understand what I'm saying? You <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. My wife is the happiest woman in the world. Ain't got to work another day in her life if she don't want to in Jesus' mighty name. But she had no idea what was inside of me. You are a gift. Don't let anyone value you. They have no idea how valuable you are. And that's why I respect people. I honor every human. I don't ignore people. I am kind to everybody. Just in case they become a billionaire, they be nice to me. <laughs> clap now, clap right now. You don't know. No idea. Tell you, neighbor, shake my hand, shake my hand. Yeah, get to, get to know me right now. Yeah, because when I become great, I want to say, I used to be your friend, you know. Yes. Remember me? <laughs> By the way, this is this, this what the priest, the, the thief said to Jesus, remember me when you come. See, in other words, I ain't sure what could happen, but let me get connected now. Yeah. And I was thinking about one of our ministers back there. I think it is often, you know, marriage door. Marriage store, when I first met Marriage store, Marriage store used to work in the hotel. He was the manager of a hotel. He came to BFM, got his head sorted out, <laughs> realized he fell in love with law. His gift was law. So he left the hotel. People said, well, you're you the manager? You're going to, yes, I'm going to follow my passion. Left the hotel, went to London, got his degree in law. He owns a law firm. Now his wife, Charlie, and sure glad he didn't stay in that hotel. <laughs> Give God a hand for who you don't know who you're sitting next to. Even your career may not be your gift, is what I'm saying. And God may send this message to you right now to tell you it's time to change your career into your call.
We got some of our friends from the Philippines here, and they, they, they're here working. And they're some of them working domestic work and other things. Let me tell you something. This is only temporary. You are greater than this. You're on your way to something. They're going to be glad you worked in their home. They're going to say, I used to remember when that president of that country used to be in my house. Wow. That's what Nehemiah did. He served people. And he became the leader of a country. Tell your neighbor, I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh, what, you got problems with that? I can't believe you got problems with that. My wife would tell you, I got quintuplets. How, how much that is, quintuplets? <laughs> Me, I'm pregnant. Matter of fact, don't keep company with barren people who ain't carrying nothing. Okay, confession. Here's some confession. Number one, out loud. Confession, read. The seed of everything is in itself. Confession number two. The end of a thing is hidden in the thing. Number three. Everything a thing is to become is in itself. Number four. God placed the future of everything in itself. Number five. Everything you were born to become is trapped within you. Rub your stomach. Tell your neighbor, I'm loaded. Tell your neighbor, I am carrying a gift for you. Speak in tongues for Kai Saxon. You are full of stuff. Don't let anyone down talk you. Don't let anyone put you in some kind of a, 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 a label. Every label is temporary. You ain't a manager of the store. You own a store. You're just managing so you can learn the system right now. That's all. Confession. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Read. But we have this treasure. Where is it hidden? In jars of clay. Earthen vessels. Your body. To do what? To show forth that this all surpassing power is from God. And not from us. Lord have mercy. Because I put that stuff inside of you. What are you supposed to do with it? Show it forth. Manifest yourself. And what happens afterwards? It says, and we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed sometimes, but not in despair. In other words, no matter what you go through, the gift is still there. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Your gift goes through drugs, teenage pregnancy. It goes through divorce. It goes through losing a business. It goes through getting fired, but it's still there. See, they can fire you, but they can't fire your gift. They can divorce you, but they can't divorce your gift. They can destroy your body, but they can't destroy your gift. Your gift is still inside of you. Hard pressed, but still pregnant. In despair, I lost my house. God said, but you still got the gift. The bank took back the car. I still got the gift. My girlfriend left me, but I still got the gift. Woo! Your gift can never be taken away. The good news. Jesus came to earth to die. Not for you. He came to die to salvage the gift. He didn't come really to save you. He came to save what you're carrying. For we are his workmanship. Can I read it for you? Created in Christ Jesus. Why? To do the good works that were prepared for you before the foundation of the world. That's why he saved you. I prophesy by the authority I have in Christ. That you will not die 
until you are manifested. I am finished, but I'm just getting started. You ain't seen nothing yet. If you see what's inside of me that I will do in the next 10 years, you're going to say, I didn't know that was that man. The same thing is true about you. Close your Bibles. Turn off your Bibles. The Lord told me to pray for you this morning for this gift. That this gift will not be destroyed by ignoring it. You know, I think I better do something because I... Please allow me. I want to show you how to find a gift. Can I do that? You sure? Okay. Let me show you how to find a gift. Can you, can you please put this back up for a second? I'll show you how to find a gift, all right? And this is very important because... couple of things about a gift. Success is the fulfillment of purpose. True? But here's the problem. Purpose is determined by the gift. And your gift fulfills your purpose. For example, the bird was made to fly, right? But the bird is not fulfilling its purpose until it's flying. Am I right? The fish has a gift of swimming. Its purpose is to swim. But it cannot fulfill its purpose until it's swimming. So you cannot really fulfill success in life until you are doing the gift that you are. Your gift is never for you. Your gift fulfills itself by serving others. No gift is for the, the one who receives it. It's to give away. So the purpose of a mango tree is a tree with mangoes. And the mangoes feed humanity, doesn't it? This is why mango trees don't eat their own mangoes. So let me show you how to find your gift. And this is going to be very important. Uh, uh, this list took me a long time to figure this one out because I had to figure out myself in my own life, what must I do to make sure I fulfill my gift? And the, the teaching of this segment is how to find it and how to release it. Well, look at verse 4, Proverbs 20. May he give you the desires of your heart and make your plans succeed. God wants you to succeed. Now, why am I reading this verse? Look at the word desire. Can you read it slowly? Read it. May he give you the desires of your heart. Okay, stop. We normally pray for God's desires. Like we go looking for them. God says, no. Read it carefully. I'm going to give you the desires that are in your heart. <laughs> He's trying to get you to understand your gift. Psalm 37, 4, read. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your... I mean, this is amazing. God says, look, your gift is not a mystery. It is the thing you've been desiring to do all your life. What is my gift? What are you desiring? What is your passion? Desire is different from interest. You may be interested in something, but it may not be your desire. Desire means you are willing to sacrifice everything for this thing. God says, I will give you what you desire. Now, why does God say that? Because he put them there. <laughs> God's will is what you've been desiring all your life. So, he says, if you commit your way to him, he will do this. When you give your life to the Lord, it's not to come to heaven. It's for him to make you manifest your desires. Why? He put them there. They are in you by him. He put them there. Yeah? Psalm 57. I cry out to God. Most high God. He fulfills his purpose for me. 
He put him in me. And he says, now, for you to be successful, I got to make sure you could fly. <laughs> I told you you were born to fly. Okay. I got to make sure you got the capacity to fly. Then I got to make sure you fly. That's what that means. What God is saying is, I am on your side all this week. I'm working on your behalf all this week. I'm going to do everything I possibly can every day to make sure you become what you were born to be. I am on your side. I make sure you fulfill your purpose, God says. Why? I gave it to you. And then it says, he rebuked those who tried to get in the way. Tell your neighbor, don't fool with my purpose. Yeah, you, 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 see, people, people think Miles Monroe is a simple fella. Don't fool with me. <laughs> I'm in my groove. God will remove people and destroy them when you are in your purpose. If they get in your way, he said he himself will rebuke them. The word rebuke means to stop. No fear. <laughs> Another verse I thought was interesting. It's Psalm 138 verse 8. Read this one aloud. Good. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the product that you made. You are on God's list this week. This is going to be the best week you had for the whole year coming up because of this message. This message is making God obligated this week to hunt you down and make sure you succeed. Give God a hand for success wherever you go this week. He's going to make it fulfilled. He's going to fulfill it, he says. He's going to do it. And so, let's take a look at how this happens. I like this. I like this picture. This reminds me of being down. That's the one I used to steal. I don't steal no more though. <laughs> wow, mine goes. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In order to fulfill your gift, you must do these things. Fish need water. Seed needs soil. And plants need earth. Birds need the air. You need God you cannot bring forth your gift without staying attached to where you came from fish came from the water they got to stay attached you came out of God don't try to fulfill your gift without God and if you're here this morning and don't know God personally as your Savior you need to come to this altar and give your life to Jesus. Not to go to heaven. You need to give your life to Christ so that you can manifest yourself on earth. Ten keys to success. How to release your purpose. Number one, you must first understand your destiny. Number two, you must have a vision of your gift. See the finished product. Number three, believe you have the ability to fulfill it. Number four, you must live by the laws that protect that gift. We call them principles. Number five, you must have a plan laid out to go toward your gift. Number six, you must have the right people around you. Because there's some gift killers. Gift killers. There's some folks who are suffocators. Because they fail, they want you to fail. They ain't going nowhere and they want to take you with them. You got to be careful with the people you have in your life. And number eight, persistence. You got to handle the pressure to go after your gift. Because you live in a culture that doesn't want you to manifest your gift. And the trouble is, the beautiful thing is, when you manifest it, then all of a sudden they become your friend. Because they want to eat your gift. Number nine, you must persevere to bring forth your gift because you will always have resistance and opposition, discouragement, failures, but you've got to keep coming back.
And number 10, you must pray over your gift every day. Pray to the one who gave it to you to give you wisdom to manifest it. I pray every day about my gift. That's my, my, my prayer life is about my gift. You pray for your purpose. You don't pray for food. You don't pray for clothing. You want to pray for your role in God's kingdom. Your delivery system. What are you supposed to bring to this thing? That's what you pray for. Oh God, show me how to do it. Revive it. Re revive it. Refine it. Define it for me. Keep it fresh, Lord. Let me see this purpose. That's what I pray for. He will, he will supply what you need. I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to people. Yes, Lord. He's talking to you. You came here. I know you came this morning. You thought you had a regular service. There's no regular service. This is different between your last life and your future life. What you become after today depends on what you do with this message today. And some of you think, yeah, I'm, I'm 70. Listen, you know how many people got started at 70? You can be wrong for 70 years and finally found the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> this is the system of releasing it. I want to show you this. Number one, know your purpose. Believe your assignment. Number two, document your vision. Put it on paper. You, you're supposed to see the mind go when you look at the seed. Do you get it? Hold a mango seed in your hand and see a mango. That's what vision is. You see the end result. Do that with your life. Number three, submit to the right environment. Even though you see the mango in the seed, you got to plant that seed in the, in the ground and give it water and give it nutrients. Your greatness could be destroyed by a wrong environment. The books you read, the people you are with, the places you go, the church you attend, all relate to what you become. And number four, feed on the right materials. When you put that fertilizer on that seed, that seed gets happy. What are you fertilizing your life with? You spend five hours watching LMN. Sorry, television. I mean, what are you feeding your, your vision? What are you feeding your gift? clubs and all this stuff. God is saying what are you doing what are you feeding your gift and number five give your gift time to develop you'll never get mangoes from a mango seed in a day go through the process number six persist under pressure when you plant that seed in the ground all the pressure the earth is on top of that but the pressure is important for the seed the pressure of your life tests the reality of your gift 
whatever stops you is how strong you are. Be persistent. And number seven, serve your gift to the world. Start giving yourself away. And sometimes people try to make money from their gift, you know, too early. My advice is volunteer it everywhere. Give it away free. Because when you give your gift away free, it gets exposed. And you know, even a drug dealer knows about this. They give you the first one free. <laughs> give your gift away. Volunteer to serve in the church. Go into the department. Whatever your gift is, I'm going to work in children, work in the youth. I'm going to work in music. I'm going to, let, me, let me give them the gift away free. I don't want to get paid. Matter of fact, some of y'all sing so bad, you should pay me to listen. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. Just... <laughs> but you must be serving your gift. How many years have I taught? I mean, from I was 15 years old, the vision is teaching the word of God. Never got a cent. And someone gives me $10,000 a day. company in Nigeria next week you get jealous of me I gave it away free for 15 years you're trying to get paid you even in there for 15 hours give it away free serve your gift volunteer last one secure the next generation have you noticed that every fruit got seed in it Every fruit got seed in it because the fruit must maintain the future. <laughs> Your gift is supposed to produce more seed. You should be mentoring people all the time to become greater than you. Then you are a great seed. Produce seeds. Produce others who will do great things. That's my whole life. My whole life is to help people better than me. That's why I teach you so much. I, I, I want you to be great people. And the seed produced a tree, and the tree produced after its kind.